man, I want to be ready when Jesus come. All right, let's see if I can get this turned off here. All right, that is turned off. I got to turn this on so we can record this for our podcast. And let's see here, it's coming. There we go. Greeting you all in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is a blessing to be back with you once again. I want to thank all of those who prayed for our family as we laid my brother to rest last week. Um, I just want to thank God for everyone that prayed. Everything went well. And I want to thank God for this message that we have today. Truly, man, what a message we have from the Lord We're going to be doing communion here right afterwards, so let's go ahead and get started. Grab your Bibles. We're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to 20. Oh, man. Buckle up. Get your pens and paper ready. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 20. And it reads this way. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are raving wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And Jesus said this, wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven is once again that we come to this hour of decision. Lord, we thank you for your word that you have for us today. It's for all of us. And Lord God, I pray that you open our hearts and our minds to receive your word. And my prayer always is that I decrease and you increase. Father, I pray they not see me, but they see thee. For in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I like to use as a title today, What's on the Inside Will Come Out. Man, I don't know about you, but... How many people know that that's true? What's on the inside will come out. You know, you don't... I want you to think about this scenario here. If you squeeze a lemon, what's going to come out? Lemon juice. If you squeeze an apple, what's going to come out? Apple juice. If you squeeze an orange, what's going to come out? Orange juice. What's ever on the inside will come out. Jesus is giving us this great warning. He starts off with beware of false prophets. Man, I'm telling you, if he is telling you to beware, that means these things are going to happen and you need to recognize them. And he tells us how we can recognize them. Because there are many False prophets that are out there. But you know what? Their fruits will tell on them. Jesus says this. They come to you in sheep clothing. See, that's outwardly. But inwardly, they are raving wolves. Boy, I tell you, a lot of people look good, don't they? A lot of people can talk churchanese, christianese. They, they sound good. They know the lingo. But Inwardly, they're rotten to the core. And I tell you, you'll know by their fruits. Jesus is so clear. He says, beware. That means you need to be on notice. If you're going to be on where, you need to know how to spot false prophets. Wow. Because don't look on the outside. Beauty is only on that outside. You want to look for that beauty on the inside. He says, they come to you in sheep's clothing, looking like they are sheep, but yet they are wolves. And then verse 16 tells us, and ye shall know them by their fruits. 
He says, do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistle? The answer there, no, they don't. So based on what they're producing, you will be able to know. Because he is so clear here in verse 17. He says, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So you need to know what the fruit of the spirit is versus the works of the flesh. You need to look those up in Galatians and it will tell you what those are. And you need to be able to spot those because they can only hold it for so long because Jesus is clear. What's on the inside will come out. You ever ran into those people who, man, they say, hey, I'm a Christian and they're praying good, doing this, doing all types of work. But if you squeeze them wrong, if you rub them wrong, you better watch out. Boy, you're going to be, there's going to be some unleashed words on you. Might even be some physical action on you. If you push them or squeeze them right, I want you to find, get this here. You will find out what you're made out of when you're put in the pressure. When the pressure's on, when the fire's on you, you'll find out what you made. When the fire's on you, are you going to explode? Are you going to curse somebody out? Or are you going to give them love? You know, matter of fact, that was one of the scriptures that I sent out. We're going to get to it. But the question is, as he gave you that example, what's on the inside will come out. So if you see someone saying, hey, I'm a Christian, but their mouth is super foul and they're cussing every at a, at a whim. Be careful. He says, beware of false prophets. Let me tell you this. Your mouth will tell on you. Uh, grab your pencils here and let's look at what the Bible says here. I want to look at James chapter 3 verses 8 through 12. Grab your Bibles and I'm going to grab this here and turn this on so I can see what we got here. James chapter 3 verses 8 through 12. And it reads this way. It says, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison, wherewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing, my brethren. These things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a vine figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. So Jesus is telling you this. No fountain can yield salt water and fresh. In other words, a God's people is not going to be using profanity and cussing out and praising God at the same time. You're not with Christ when you're doing that. He is clear here. He says, out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Wow, what a stern thing that he is telling us is that our mouth will tell on us. Our mouth will tell us what is inside. Man, I tell you, because he's clear that you can't tame the tongue. No matter how controlled you think you are, you think you can control that tongue. See, the tongue is a heart matter. God controls the heart and therefore controls the tongue. So if you are not, if your tongue's not under control, you can't control it. Only God can. So that should be a wake up call. If you're cursing or, or just talking bad about people, listen to, here's what the scripture says. 
Ephesians chapter, let, let, let's let the word talk. I don't want to say anything. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Listen to this. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. It says this. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So that's not just profanity. If you got some evil communication that's not edifying, that means building someone up, keep your mouth shut. He says, let no, if you are tearing people down, it doesn't make you look good at all. It shows a deficiency in you. If you're always looking for an issue with somebody else, the problem you're looking in the wrong place, you need to be looking in the mirror. He says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. What are you ministering to the hearers? Or are you letting them find out exactly what you are? Because that's what Jesus says. Your mouth will tell on you. Here's what Isaiah said. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. Listen to this. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. Listen to this. He says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone. Get this. Because I am a man of unclean lips. You're not going to be done until that lips is controlled because ultimately it's the heart. Isaiah was saying here, woe is me for I am undone for I am a man of unclean lips. Man, I'm telling you, what are you saying out of your mouth? Now let me tell you, you'll be amazed at what comes out of your mouth and many a times, you know, you are listening to things around you. You're watching things that are using profanity, saying bad things. And before you know it, you're saying, you don't even know why you're saying it. Because those seeds have been planted. It's just like you watch those movies and they're bleeping out the words. Why are you watching it? You know what they're going to say. You know what they're saying and they're planting those words in you. Here's what the scripture says. Let me help you out. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. This is one of the verses that I had my junior high Sunday school learn. And I tell you, you look them up today, they'll tell you that brother speller, that's your verse there. Yes, it is, because it opened my eyes. Listen to this. It says, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manner. And that communication is a lot of forms. It could be verbally, visually. There's a lot of ways to communicate. But evil communication corrupts good manner. Many people say, hey, I can talk to this person. I can watch this show and not be affected. Well, you don't miss the part. The first part of that verse says, be not deceived. I'm telling you, cut the evil out, the cut the evil communication out, and you'll find out that you'll have good manners. <laughs> Boy, what a verse there. I hope you circled that one. But we're talking about your mouth will tell on you. And Isaiah said, Woe is me, I'm a man undone of unclean lips. Now look look what James says. Oh man, we're getting there. We're there. James chapter 1, verse 26 says this. I gotta speed it up here. It says, if any man among you seemeth to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people tell me is, um, if they push me, I, I'm going to let them have it. And boy, you know, that tells a lot. They can't control it. Because they're already telling you, if I'm pushed to the max, it's going to come out. What's going to come out is not going to be edifying to the hearer. 
and that tells you that you have a heart problem. This message should be talking to someone out there because if your mouth cannot be bridled by the Spirit of God, you're none of His. I want to be clear there. He is so clear. He, let me read this verse again. Write it down. I'll help you out. James chapter 1, verse 26. It says, if any man, see there's no exclusions here, among you seem to be religious. Oh boy, they can fake it really good. And bridleth not his tongue. See, that's the indicator of that tongue because it's coming from the heart. We're getting there. Hold on. But deceiveth his own heart. You see, there it is, the heart. You can't get around it. This man's religion is vain. I, how in the world you seen you going around representing God, cussing and talking bad and saying bad words? Are you kidding me? Can you bridle that tongue? Do you understand that you represent him? Or do you? If you just let it rip when you're pushed under pressure, what's in you will come out. And as we said, it's a heart issue. Listen to this. Jeremiah 17, 17, 9 says this. Jeremiah 17, 9. Man, time flies up here. Jeremiah 17, 9 says this. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Boy, that heart is deceitful. You know, and I, I, you know, I heard people say this. Oh, I just got to follow my heart. Oh. oh, don't do that. Don't follow your heart. Let me, this is what, the heart is deceitful. Oh, see, there you go. You've been tricked. The heart is deceitful above all things. And that means another thing, desperately wicked who can know it. Don't follow your heart. You got to follow the word of God. Oh, some bad, oh I'm just following my heart. Oh. Don't follow your heart. Because your heart is say, hey, get this. Tell them that. Your heart is of the world. Your heart is fleshly. And when you squeeze it, the flesh and the world is going to come out. And you're going to do it. No one, no good. You know, Jesus, if you read this reading, Matthew chapter 7, this is even, I mean, read the entire chapter. Because Jesus was saying, many is going to come to him in that day saying, Lord, Lord. Haven't I done this? Cast out devils. Haven't I done these good works? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Wow. See, you, there's power in the name of Jesus. Yeah, you probably did all that thing. But yet you still never knew him. I'm not going to talk about some popular um, gospel singers, but you saw when he was pressed to the max. I didn't probably give you a clue there. And what came out of him? Remember the words of Jesus, wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Man, I'm telling you, I don't know if you saw that video. I'll give you the name Kirk Franklin. If you saw that video, boy, he was saying some words. Woo! And you say, man, oh my God, that was some terrible stuff. I, I felt sorry for him myself. But because he was pushed and it came out. See, whenever you squeeze, what comes out is what's inside. That should tell you something. He says, beware of false prophets. Man, what's on the inside? It's a heart issue. Um, Psalm 66, 18 says this. Psalm 66, 18 says this. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You must Come clean with him. You know what? Why are you trying to cover it up? He knows anyway. Come clean with the Lord and say, Lord, as Isaiah said, I'm a man undone of unclean lips. Deliver me from this. And as the scripture said, my brethren, these things ought not so to be. And here we go. Here's, we're getting down to the heart of the matter. Write this down. Matthew chapter 12 Verse 34 to 35. Man, get there. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34 to 35. Listen to this. Oh, boy, Jesus, don't be playing here. Listen to this. 
He says, O oh, generations of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? You can't. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Oh boy. As a good man out of the good tre treasures of his heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil tre treasures bringeth forth evil things. You see, it's a heart issue. When you listen to somebody, what's coming out of their mouth, it tells you what's in the heart. Now, if Jesus tells us to beware, we're not judging, we're fruit inspectors. So everybody get hung up on, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You don't know what you're talking about. But Jesus tells us to beware and you'll know them by the fruits. you got to make a decision. And you're not judging their heart. Their heart is coming out from the, and, it, it, and it, they're judging themselves. Now, he says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Now, the question is this. Your sin will find you out. You can cover it up. You can be that um, wolf in sheep clothing, but your sin will find you out. It's just a matter of time because that abundance of that heart, that mouth is going to speak and it's going to tell on you because what's on the inside will come out. Listen to this. Numbers 32 verse 23. Numbers 32 verse 23 says this. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Your sin will find you out. Man, I'm telling you, there's no hiding from the Lord, so you need to come clean with him. He said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If you have this problem, this should be a wake-up call and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Deliver me from being unclean with my words. Clean up my speech. Because he says, if you're not able to bridle your tongue, it tells you that your religion is vain. You're, it's, it's vain to you. If you have no control of your mouth and you just are saying anything, it's a wake-up call. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. This is our last verse. 1 Corinthians 15, 34 says this. Awake to righteousness. You see, you want to, you, you've been asleep. He says, wake up. He's shaking you. Wake up to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Man, I tell you, it's so important that you represent Christ well. Make sure that you are in Christ. And there are some indicators. One of them is, is your mouse under control? The Lord gave me this message and I'm like, wow. I was so excited. Because you will not know this, I had a foul mouth. Man, I cussed like a sailor and said bad things, two people down. And then the Lord hit me one day and man, I've never been the same ever since. I landed in the book of James chapter 3. You need to get there if you got a problem with your mouth. And boy, I tell you, I was almost like Saul on the road to Damascus, turning into Paul, when he said, Why persecuteth thou me? And I had to reckon with him. And he reckoned with me. And boy, I tell you, when that, that tongue was under control by the Spirit, what a change in my life it has been. So the question is simple as we're ending. What is in you? Or better yet, who is in you? Is Christ in you? Are you still controlled by the flesh? Because be sure here, whenever you squeeze, the flesh is going to come out or the spirit. What's in you? I pray that Christ is in you. Jesus said this. He says, Nay, I say unto you, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Repent of your sin. He already knows your sin. Repent of it and come to Christ. Believe on him. 
believe that he is the son of God and that he died for your sins. And on the third day, he rose from the graves with all power. Romans chapter 10, 9 says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, it's all with the heart. You must believe on Jesus Christ. Do you believe that he's that son of God? He's the son of God, and that he died for your sins, bled and died. And then on three days, he rose from the grave with all power. Believe on him for thou salvation. And then confess him with your mouth. Many said in a prayer. Matter of fact, we had the opportunity, praise God, to go out in a neighborhood yesterday. And I was so tired coming from out of town and told my mom I wasn't going to go. But the spirit says go. And man, I tell you, I'm going to see why he went. Why he told me to go. What a time. And we had a man named Corey. Um, give his life to Christ right before our eyes. You know, we asked him if he was to die right now, where would he spend eternity? He said he hoped he spends eternity in heaven. He's been a good person, treating everybody right. And we had to break the news to him. That won't work. No matter how good you are, the Bible said there's none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we told him that Jesus Christ was the only way. And he saw his need for Christ and repentant. Praise God for that. And he said a prayer like this. If you would like to confess Christ that you believe in your heart. So you, you must believe first. If you believe, you can say this prayer. Dear God, I thank you um, for dying for my sins. And I thank you that in three days you rose from the grave. I repent of my sin and believe on you for my salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. If you've done that, we would love to hear from you. Drop us a line at minutesoftruth.org. We're going to go right into our communion. Oh, and I'm super excited. We do this on the first, but I did forget last week. Had a lot going on, but Lord said, hey, let's do it this week. We're going to jump in it right quick here. I'm going to read from um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 28. Verse 27, let me start with verse 27, actually. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27, it says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Amen. Let me grab these elements here. It says, For I received of the Lord, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. I'll pray for the elements. Father, we thank you for this time that we can come to do this in remembrance of you. We know that the blood, the, the juice, the wine represents the blood that was shed on Calvary for all the world. And then the bread represents your body that was broken for us. Lord, I ask that you bless him, and we thank you. It says, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take the bread and eat all of it. Verse 25, after the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, 
This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Take the juice and drink all of it. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Man, I love communion because this reminds us of what he's did, but most importantly, that he's coming back. I pray that you have a blessed day in the Lord. And remember, what's on the inside will come out. Be blessed.